Oh, g'day class, didn't see you there. Well, this is a brief little video on the electronic soldering assignment. So what you need to do is you need to download these three documents um, and uh, have them on your iPad so that you can work on this assignment. So you need the questions, which is this sheet here. You need the soldering guide there, info number one and info number two. So both of those have all the information that you need to be able to do this assignment. However, we're just gonna talk about a couple of things today. First of all, the soldering process is a process we use to join two metals at a low heat. So out in the metal workshop, we can weld, like arc weld or, or braze weld, and they're at extremely high heats. Okay, and the reason for that is that the melting point of those metals is a lot higher. So what we need to do is we want to join these at a lower heat because we're using small components like a resistor and joining them onto a circuit board, which has a thin um, little pad of copper to be able to join these two together. All right, so what we're doing is we're joining at a low heat, then hence why we use solder. So solder is a mixture of tin, 60%, and lead, which is 40%. And that's an alloy, so an alloy is something that mixes, that is a com combination of two metals. So the alloy, okay, or the solder, is like this. It might be hard to see, but it's flexible, and what it does is it easily melts. It has a low melting point. Therefore, we're able to solder at a low temperature. What it also has in it is what's called a core of flux. So flux is, flux is a, um, basically an acid that cleans the surface of both the component and the circuit board. All right, so if you've got a circuit board here, which has a pad and a track to another pad, and it looks like this. So each of these little round bits, they're pads, and the electricity or the current follows from this pad to this pad through that path. Now we might join this by having a resistor that goes and joins that together. So the joining of the resistor and the pad is what we're doing. Now what we need to do to get a good join is we need to clean that, and that's where the flux comes into it. The flux cleans it, it's like an acid as I said, and it gets rid of any of the oxidization, which is rust, all right? If we get rid of that, we can get a nice clean and strong join. If that's there, it, leads, it could potentially lead to a faulty or weak joint, so it's really important. So that's why we need flux. So the next thing is the safety. There's plenty of safety tips, but it's really important that you remember a couple of key ones. One, we always need safety glasses when we're working um, with any machinery, whether it be soldering irons or a drill press. And the other one is that we need to make sure we're in a well-ventilated area. So we open windows, have um, extractions on and so forth. The most important one is to remember that the soldering iron, which is this, is hot. So this whole part here gets up to about 350 degrees because that's what we need. So one of the biggest safety concerns is making sure we are careful of that and uh, not burning ourselves, all right, or burning anything else or anyone else. Really, really important. If you, if you can't use these sensibly, you won't be using them at all. So it's important to remember that this end part here, all this metal is hot. So we have a stand in which the soldering iron goes into, and that reduces the risk of you burning yourself or the iron burning the, any plastic or the tabletop or paper, anything like that. So by putting it into that stand, we reduce the risk. It's really important it always goes in there if you're not actually soldering, all right? We have the power pack that goes with it. We're able to adjust the temperature there, and we have the on-off switch on the side. All right, so it just plugs straight into your wall with a, uh, where it's 240, 240, 240 volts, sorry. All right, so that's your soldering iron. Really important that you remember what part is hot. All right, if for some reason you do burn yourself larger than the, the size, the palm of your hand, um, then you, we will need to seek medical attention. All right. So preparing to solder is a process in which we actually clean the tip of the iron. So the tip of the iron needs to be clean, just like we talked about before, we need to get rid of any oxidization. Therefore, the heat in the iron can be transferred really easily to both the component, all right, and the circuit board, which we talked about there, all right? So we need that to be nice and clean. 
So there's a process to go through there called tinning, all right? And there's some diagrams in the, in the booklets that show you that process. So you'll need to explain that. And what we do is we clean it by heating it up to the temperature with the damp sponge that's in the stand. We wipe it clean. We then add solder to the tip of the iron, okay? And it will melt on there. Uh, let that melt all over the iron, then we clean it off, we repeat that a few times until the tip becomes nice and shiny. All right, and the last thing we do is we just melt a little bit of solder onto that tip and we would return it to the stand so that it's ready to solder. So that's the process of tinning. So we're just about to talk about what a good joint and a, dry, a, a bad joint is, or a dry joint. Okay, so if this is our board, uh, board we have our lead of our component coming through so I'll just draw two because I'll need to okay and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what a good joint is so when we create a good joint we get a nice volcano shape all right so a beautiful nice volcano shape like so um, and that's when both the lead here okay so the lead and the circuit board are both hot Okay, so they're both hot, so we make sure we get the tip touching both the lead down here and the board. And I'll show you that in a practical demonstration, all right? But we need to make sure we've got heat on both of those. When we do, we add in the solder. It should melt and flow nicely over your, your um, little pad on the circuit board, okay? And there, then it should create a nice volcano shape. If you haven't heated up both the lead and the board nicely and evenly, you'll get what's called a dry joint, where it might ball up around, say, the lead, okay, and that creates a dry joint, all right, which is what we want to avoid, because what it does is it might adhere to the lead, but it doesn't actually adhere here or here to the board. We don't get that nice um, volcanic shape here. So really important that we um, get a good joint with the heat transferred to both the lead and the board and, av and avoid where we're only getting heat into just the lead. All right, so that is a good and a bad joint or a good and a dry joint. So something like that, drawn like that in your project, uh, in your assignment would be excellent. So the next part is to explain how um, you should prepare a component ready to solder. So that's about bending the lead. So if we've got a resistor here, okay, it'll have a lead coming out. What we need to do is we'll need to bend that resistor using pliers here. So you could pliers there, and we're going to bend that to a 90 degree angle, okay? So we're going to prepare the um, the resistor, there it is, one, two, and the third one might show how you've bent these leads to 90 degrees so that they go into the board, which would be sitting there, and there's a hole there. So that hole is where the lead will go through there and there. So that's what we're looking to do, is to prepare the components, i.e. a resistor, to go into the board. So you can add a nice little one, two, three, four step um, process of bending that. The last thing that we do is we just bend that lead to a nice 45 degree there so that it will sit in its position and uh, not come out of the board. We cut that off about three millimeters past with some wire cutters here. So we cut that off before we solder. If we cut it off after we solder, we actually um, might weaken the joint. So we need to, to cut that off um, before we solder. So about three millimeters sticking through the board. All right, so that's what we do to prepare a, com a, prepare a component for soldering. So the last two questions are talking about, um, you know, listing the care required for like things like resistors, diodes. All of that information is in the booklet. Okay, there are some, com some components which we need to put the right way around into a circuit. So there's a positive and a negative end. If we don't put it around the right way, it could either um, stop the circuit from working or it could actually damage um, the component itself or be dangerous to us if it's around the wrong way. So it's important that you read what, what component goes uh, and what component has what 
specific requirements for um, being put into a circuit board. So have a look at that and make sure that's right. The last thing is how can things be desoldered? If we do, for instance, have a cold joint like this one here, we can use what's called a solder sucker, which heats up the solder around and then you press a button and it sucks up all the solder that's then melted again. All right, That way we can get the uh, everything back to how it was originally and we can re-solder it. The other way is using a solder uh, remover pad, which is by putting a little um, pad over the soldering iron, heating it over the soldering joint, heating it up, and then the solder absorbs into that little pad. Okay, so that's how we can remove it. Well, I hope what this video has done has helped you give a bit of an idea of what you need to do. So now you need to read through your information and find the answers for all of those questions. Everything's in there. So there's not a question on that sheet that can't be answered from the information in those booklets. All right, all the best, and I will see you on Friday. Have a great day, guys. And oh, just one thing, you'll need to finish this assignment for homework because it will be submitted in your next lesson, all right? So whenever that may be. So thanks, guys, and I will see you very soon.